Hello everyone and welcome to another Flux tutorial. My name is Zach Peterson and today I'm going to show you how to configure your pads for SMD components and I'm also going to show you how you can apply custom pad shapes inside the PCB editor in Flux. Now when you're creating pads for SMD components, sometimes pads can have a very odd shape. Sometimes you just want to do something custom that hasn't been done before. You can do all of that in Flux and I'm going to show you how. I'm I'm also going to talk a little bit about when you would want to do custom pad shapes and use them in your components. Make sure to hop into Flux and follow along. To get started building a component with custom pad shapes, there are two ways that you can use the tools in Flux to create custom pads or edit existing pads so that they have a custom shape. So the first method is just to use the design rules. So when you're inside of your component, you can then select those pads and you can apply design rules to those pads and it will modify the pad shape. The other way to do this that gives you the power to create fully and totally custom pad shapes is to add an asset. So you can use SVG files or DXF files to create custom pad shapes. So here on screen, I have a component that I've been playing with in another video, and we're going to create some custom pad shapes for this component just to illustrate what can be done inside the program. Now here, when I'm inside the PCB editor, you see here that I have a pad labeled P1, and by default it has this shape with this size. And you can see that this is the default because here under object specific rules, I only have the position rule. But if I wanted to, I could of course add in some other design rules to modify the shape of this pad. So the first one that would be probably most common is the size rule. So if I just enter in something like say 3 millimeters by 1 millimeter, it's going to set the size to 3 millimeters in X by 1 millimeter in Y. So this type of circular profile is something that you will actually sometimes see in production components or in production libraries. Sometimes you want to add in this little bit of extra copper here to make room for a solder fillet. Uh, some companies just prefer to do this on all of their pads because it makes all of their pads unique. And sometimes you will actually see this as the recommended method for placing pads in a component in a data sheet. This is also the type of shape that you might want to use for the pads uh, on the bottom side of a QFN component. So there are a number of different reasons for, to use this type of pad shape. Now the other design rule that I can use if I want to change the shape of the pad is I can of course just use the pad shape rule. So if I add this in, you'll see here I'll have some options. I can control very quickly between circular and rectangular. So if I set this to rectangular, you'll see here that it removes that uh, circular profile on the edges, and then it just sets the size based on a rectangular profile. So you see you have these right angles here. So those are the two standard pad shapes that are built into Flux, and you can see them right here using the pad shape rule. So along with the size rule, I could of course change the shape itself. So by default, we applied that circular shape that we saw before. But if I just search for the shape rule and then select pad shape and click add, I can also choose between circular and rectangular. So I could make this a rectangle if I wanted to, and you can see that it automatically updates the pad shape along these two edges. And of course, I could apply a different size if I want to as well. So this would make it you know, three millimeters by four millimeters. Now, the other thing that I could do is I could apply these rounded corners here without using a circular shape. So by default, if I use this circular shape, you see what it does is it applies a corner radius that matches half the distance, whatever the shortest distance is of this pad. Now, what I could do is instead of applying the default corner radius, I could just add in a corner radius design rule. So if I click the corner radius design rule, click done, I could make this, let's say, a 0.5 millimeter corner radius, and that'll apply it to all four corners of this pad. You could also apply it just to one of the corners if you pa of the pad if you want. So for example, I could do corner radius top left, top right, etc. So there are a number of different ways to customize these pads. You don't just have to stick with a circular pad 
or a rectangular pad. The rectangular pad is, of course, most common. In some cases, there is justification for using like a pad with these rounded edges where it extends just a little bit from one of these leads. Now let's suppose that we want to apply a custom shape to, let's say, pad P1. But we don't want to have to go through all of this business with applying the and configuring all of these design rules. What can we do? Well, one thing that we can do is we can use an asset. So just as an example, you'll see here that I already have some assets applied uh, to this part. I have a custom symbol here, and I have this other asset here that I have labeled pad shape. So this is just a DXF file. Now, DXF files can be used in multiple locations, but here I'm going to use this particular DXF file as the shape for this pad, P1. So to do that, all I need to do is select the pad, go to edit, click add. Here I can use the uh, design rule asset, click add, and here I can then select from one of these two options. So here I'm going to use just pad shape. Now you'll see here it automatically updated to this triangle shape. And so that's because of course I drew out a triangle shape in a DXF file and then added it into this uh, project for this component. And what this is doing is, is it is now overriding all of these other design rules, except of course the position rule. So I can turn that off, I can turn it back on, or of course I could swap this for some other asset that is attached to the project. And in fact, you see here, I even have the symbol available here under the assets list. So I could even apply the symbol that I'm using for this component as a pad shape if I wanted to. So what do you need to do inside of a DXF editor in order to create one of these pad shapes? Well, here I have Autodesk open and you can do this with a number of different programs. There are free CAD uh, tools like uh, LibreCAD that will let you create uh, DXF files. Um, I have an AutoCAD license, so I'm just going to do it in AutoCAD real quick. So here, um, when we're creating our uh, custom pad, um, first thing I'm going to do is start at the origin. And then the other thing that I want to do is I want to make sure that I am drawing out the correct lengths here. So what Flux does is it assumes that whatever length you put in here into this DXF file is in meters. So I would want to put in 0 0.001 if I wanted to have a length of one millimeter. Um, here I can draw out some kind of odd shape if I want to. Here this line is going to be 0.9 millimeters. Here I'm going to just kind of draw this and we'll go back over here, connect here, and then we'll come down to the origin. So this is gonna be my next custom pad shape. So I'm gonna save this, and I will just save it to my desktop as a DXF file. We'll do it in the 2018 file shape. We'll do it in the 2018 format, and we'll just name it pad shape 3.dxf. And we'll go ahead and hit save. So now that I've saved that, I can go down to manage and I can add an asset. I just go over to the desktop, select pad shape, click open, and then hit done. So now I've attached that asset to the project. Then I can select this pad, go down here to asset, select shape three, and then you'll see it updates. So it gives me that custom shape. So that sizing that we did inside of AutoCAD is very important. You want to make sure that the number that you put in here is the correct number. So remember, I put in a length of 0 0.001 for this section or for this edge of the pad in order to indicate one millimeter. If you do just the number one, it's going to be this huge pad. It's going to take up the entire screen and that's going to be a big error, of course. So make sure that you set the correct uh, values here for these lengths when you are setting up your pad shape. Now, uh, one thing that I did is, of course, go into the docs and take a look to see what you can do. Here, there are a few different ways to add these assets. So, of course, here you have the DXF uh, option. You can also create an SVG file using something like Inkscape. Or what you can do is you can actually type in 
some SVG code into your pad shape rule. And using this code is then going to apply the shape automatically. So let's just try this out just for fun um, inside the editor in Flux. So here, if I just turn off the asset for the moment, and then turn off these other rules, and just go into pad shape here, paste this in, let's see what happens. Now there are some online resources that you can use to create SVG files. So for example, let's say you have a PNG image and you want to convert it to an SVG file. You can go to png2svg.com and from here you can drag and drop or choose a file and it will convert it to an SVG image. And you can see here you can even pick your palette. There is also an online SVG code editor. This is at editsvgcode.com, so if you want to try your hand at coding out an SVG, you can do it with this online tool, and then you'll be able to download the image to your computer, and then from there you can actually edit the code on your computer in Notepad. The other thing that you can do is you can use this tool called SVG Edit. So it's at this uh, longer URL here that you see in the window. Here in this uh, tool, you can actually draw out all of the different shapes that you want in your SVG file. So for example, you know, I can trace out a big square like this, I can put whatever colors I want into it. Once I have it the way I like it, I can go up here to the menu and then I can download it. So here I can save the image. You see I can also import images if I want. So I have an option to import image. So there are all sorts of different tools that you'll find online to create your own SVGs, either by drawing them out by hand coding them or converting an existing image to an SVG. Check out the links in the description. We'll have links to these resources. So you see here, once I pasted that shape data in for the pad shape rule, you can see here it automatically applied all of this. So this SVG code can very conveniently be used to set these pad shapes kind of like I've shown here. So personally, I think the easiest way to do this, if you just want to get a basic shape like a square or a rectangle, or even something like an oblong shape is to just use the pad shape and corner radius rules. But when you need something that's really custom, like a curved shape, something that's built with arcs and lines inside of AutoCAD, you could of course use an asset. So that's where you're gonna get the much more custom shapes that you can't do with just the standard design rules. Thanks for watching this video, everyone. To summarize, there are two different ways you can create and customize your pad shapes. One is to use an asset, and then the other is to apply design rules inside the PCB editor. Make sure to play around with both methods and find the one that works best for you when you're creating your own components. Thanks again, everybody. Make sure to subscribe, and we'll see you next time.